Ice Fishing For the present work, I shot more than 700 photographs between November 2008 and February 2009. Roughly a third of these are interesting images. The 70 pictures appearing here were selected from among my favorites with an eye toward this format. The setting is the fish pond in my backyard, a pool of endless delight from which I've taken thousands of digital photographs in all seasons since 2004. After three winters of photographing ice forms in the fish pond, I hit upon the idea of directing the fountain over a grid of plastic deer netting installed each autumn to keep the leaves out. The images made from this effort inspired me to create an installation of netting stretched on an oversized A-frame over the pond. When the cold came this November, I was shocked by how quickly a massive ice form rose up from the pond. I'd been expecting it to ebb and flow over the days and weeks as it had done over previous winters, but due to a sudden and relentless cold snap, the blossom of early ice tore the netting from the far corners of the frame. In a matter of days, the ice made the four-foot climb to the top of the frame and from there spread out horizontally over the tatters of the netting. The initial ice form was largely hollow, and early on, most of the changes took place at the interior. In December, during a string of temperate days, the fountain jets cut through the ice and a gelid wind painted out an entirely new form. From the first freeze to the sudden collapse of the column of ice during a warm spell at the end of February, I've been daily amazed as I photographed the permutations in the ice. For better or worse, the camera used was a Sony Cybershot DSC V1 which has also served as a vehicle of introduction to the world of digital imaging. Abandoning 40 years of work with film, I've been introduced to the wonders of digital noise, clipping, artifacting, chromatic aberration, and shutter lag, among other aggravations. Disregarding all other limitations combined, compared with spring wine film cameras, my low-end digital camera is an insufferable contraction based on shutter lag alone. If I had the teeth for it, I would have long ago chewed it up and buried it like a bone. That said, like all stewards of folly, I've gained a certain fondness for the camera. For in its limitations, I also found the freedom to shoot without restraint. Barely a camera, its real use was found in throwaway sketch work. In many respects, the Cybershot reminds me of my very first camera, purchased for 50 cents back in 1963 when I was eight years old. A neat little spy camera I found advertised in the back of a comic book, it was, except for the spring, every inch of plastic. It's just as well that I didn't survive beyond the two rolls of film I passed through it. The first problem among many was that I could barely see the finder, and I soon discovered that what I could see bore little relationship to what was actually photographed. The finder in the cyber shot is no better as far as framing accuracy, and while the back display may be accurate, it is impossible to see in daylight. Hence, so I have learned, point and shoot is a literal term. These point and shoot cameras might more aptly be called snap and delete, because that is what they are best used for. Take a picture, look at it, then trash it. Little is worth keeping and almost nothing is worth printing. Yet, yet, very beautiful ephemera can be made. I probably learned more about composing an image in the past three years with this camera than in working with film cameras over the previous 20. Love it and hate it, I learned to work with it. As a subject, ICE provides many challenges, especially for the limited metering and auto-focusing capacities of a camera such as the Cybershot. The reason I shot so many photos was I could barely see, barely focus, and the exposure was usually wrong. Doing it all handheld didn't always work to my advantage either. Lackadaisical at the start of the project, once I figured out what I wanted to do, I was relentless during each day's shoot, going back and forth and reshooting again and again until I captured what I was looking for. Nevertheless, one never gets it all. Much that I saw was beyond the capacity of the camera. There were many missed opportunities and there were many beautiful sights I failed to haul in. But rather than have this be a tale of the one that got away, herein shall be found the most delicious of the winter's daily catch.